When the 2024 NFL schedule was released, fans of both the Miami Dolphins and the New England Patriots circled Sunday, October 6, 2024. Because, hey, it's Pat's Dolphins. Who doesn't love a good AFC East showdown? For New England Patriots fans, they were figuring this might very well be the first day that Drake May gets a start as a professional in the NFL. And Tom Brady's likely to be on the broadcast. This might be one of the greatest Sundays of my life, not involving the birth of a child or the playoffs. And for the Dolphins fans, they probably thought, hey, another easy win, because one thing Tua doesn't do, aside from unfortunately get hurt too often, is lose to the Patriots. And instead, now we have two of the most inept offenses, two teams circling the drain, one and three, as Andy Hart and I joked earlier on the Six Rings podcast, first team, not I I said first team to 17 wins. Andy said, and we welcome in Josh Houts from another Dolphins podcast here, joining us so kindly late in the afternoon as part of our Six Rings and Football Things preview of Patriots Dolphins Sunday at the Razor. Josh, I want to get your first quick reaction to this. Uh, my co-host thought was, here's what we should do Sunday. We should treat it like NFL overtime rules. First team to score a touchdown wins. Everyone go home. I'm, I'm for that. But the way these two teams are playing, I think uh, we can all agree for that. Get us home early to watch some real football. At least that's what it seems like early on in the season. It's it's brutal, man. So let me let me um, let me let me back up before we get into the game itself. What Dolphins fans, the Dolphins fans of the world, Finns Nation are saying about the Patriots and more. Just what's going on like with the Dolphins? How how quickly I get two has been injured before and the offense is held its ground at least or like it's looked like a if Tua is the premium grocery it is at least looked like a store brand version of itself whereas now like it has just fallen apart and yet still a lot of the playmakers are there like I see the eight chains I see uh the most dirts you know I I we still got fuzzy McDaniel on the sideline I got Waddle I got Tyreek what gives with this offense just completely going in the toilet yeah, well, I can't throw any shade about Fuzzy McDaniel because I'm pretty fuzzy myself. But, I mean, it, it really does seem like they just uh, almost been figured out, right? It all dates back to last season. You know, two of struggles late in the year. The Dolphins seem to struggle late in the year. But ever since then, it just seems like defense has, you know, been able to figure him out a little bit, whether it's being physical at the line, whether it's, you know, the two safeties that dropped back that I think Mel Kuyper was trying to try to outlaw. Um, so, you know, so obviously when you lose – Obviously, when you use your starting quarterback, you expect a little bit of a drop off, but I don't think any of us expected this significant of a drop off. We knew Tua Tomalo was the perfect, you know, uh, point guard in this offense, but when he went down, everyone hoped maybe Skylar Thompson could rise the occasion after three years in this offense. That was not the case. And as you know, now we're starting Tyler Snoop Huntley for the second time now. And what? He's been here for two weeks now. Yeah. He's been, he's literally been there just enough time to get a cup of coffee and maybe order a second. And now, like, Starts on Monday Night Football. You guys can't do anything. You make the Titans look like the 49ers, and we made the 49ers look like the 49ers on the West Coast on Sunday as well. Brutal affair on Monday night. Uh, you know, it wasn't even – it was Mason Rudolph time. It wasn't even Will Levis because that idiot was running around the field throwing interceptions to you guys, then running off telling his coach, I didn't see him. I swear I didn't even I didn't even see where he was at. Just, despite that still – was it a, was it a 32 12 what was the final score 30 like yeah 31 12 yeah it was uh, it was ugly it was an ugly was. loss and like you said i mean that's the epitome you see teams step up and win games when a mason rudolph has to come in and manage so you kind of hoped you could see that you know with a skylar thompson a snoop mm -hmm. huntley with you know mike mcdaniel being an offensive guru but um that has not been the case not early on without two of Valoa. so so beyond the Tua issue like just like beyond the quarterback issue up here like we literally have two guys that are fans of and podcast about two of the worst three offenses in the NFL. Now, I anticipated the Patriots would be bottom 25% uh, of offenses, at least until Drake May finally got in there. Then there would could be a higher higher ceiling, but also potentially a higher uh, a much lower floor. Um, the uh, the Dolph Dolphins' offensive problems are throwing people for a loop. But I wonder if we aren't playing a little bit of a cruel mirror game on Sunday because. I saw Taron Armstead is on the injury report. You guys are having offensive line issues. The Patriots could well be starting. It could be the second start for our fourth left tackle of the season on Sunday, Demontre Jacobs. He was a waiver wire pickup from the Broncos. David Andrews, our rock perennial Pro Bowl, um, you know, Pro Bowl center, two-time Super Bowl champion, team captain. He's out for the year with a shoulder injury. So we're going to start a rookie undrafted guy because the backup to David Andrews also got hurt, and he's the backup at left guard. 
So the Patriots could have an almost all new offensive line, which is the worst thing you could possibly have for a run game, pass blocking symmetry and continuity on the offensive line is, is, and obviously for, for scoring, is that, is that you think as much an issue as the quarterback thing is for the dolphins right now? Yeah, I think it has to be. I mean, I don't know if you've seen it, but there's a, almost a meme going around of Chris Greer. You know, he was asked about the offensive line and maybe, you know, not addressing it back to back season. He kind of just chuckles. You know, you guys are worried about the offensive line than we are. And he kind of gives this little, you know, like arrogant chuckle. And ever since then, it just seems like whether they've avoided the offensive line, whether it's, you know, having a guy like you mentioned, Teron Armstead, uh, when he's out there, he's one of the best left tackles, but he's usually not out there. So um, we definitely have some holes on the offensive side. I actually uh, messaged a good friend of mine, a New England Patriots uh fan named Brett and he was you know give me a rundown I was he was going through all the injuries and I was like dang these two teams are you know I think Miami had well 11.2 points per game dead last you guys are what 13 points per game but 13, injuries yeah. aside it is absolutely uh dismal and like you mentioned at the beginning of the season no one expected Miami to be dead last in points per game this early in the year so I uh, defensively speaking I figured that one of the issues I, I I got a guy that I'm going to be doing a radio show with a little bit later on tonight who's also part of our morning show he was hype on the Dolphins. I thought the Bills would win the AFC East or probably rather. I thought the Bills would be a wild card team and I thought the Jets would win the AFC East. Now we'll see how that bears out. Pats wouldn't contend. They would just be a, a, hard, a hard fought, well coached, tough bar fight out every week. And that's the way that they sh should contend and play the rest of the season. I thought the Dolphins would take a step back. I thought, uh, you know, losing losing uh, Wilkins oh, to the Raiders was tough as well. A little bit of defensive attrition. Chubb, uh, I know last year got hurt. Is he? He's not even back yet, is he? No, Chubb's not back, and they just lost yeah. Jalen Phillips for the season too. So uh, wait, know. is he out for the se Wait, is he out for the he, season? Yeah, that just came out today. Jalen Phillips is out oh, for the year, uh, knee injury, and and everyone knows how hard he battled back from that ACL. There, I guess it was the Achilles last year to get back out there. And uh, he's a great yeah, so he, pass rusher, man. I loved him coming out of the draft. I was like, like Jason Taylor 2.0, man. What he was a steal That's, for you guys. Absolutely. So now we're hoping Chop Robinson steps up. I know a lot of Dolphin fans are down on him because he's not, you know, converting those pressures into sacks. So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm intrigued to see what this defense can do, you know, without Jalen Phillips. But um, we're all hurting right now on both sides. Yeah, man, like uh, the Patriots, even Bill Belichick was busting the Patriots balls and he would be want for doing that, obviously, because he's still a little salty over this mutual decision to part ways, conscious uncoupling, firing, dismissal, whatever you want to call it. I think he wanted to write his own ticket and not have to watch one of his protégés and former players take over for him. And and now, you know, we've got this situation where like you guys have your 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 QB of the future was supposed to be your QB of the now as well who just got a big fat uh payday with, you know, with a check in the amount of the area code for, you know, New York City, 212 million dollars. And now Tua may get a courtesy check this year. He's going to want to come back, but there are, there are cooler heads that hopefully will prevail and tell him not to come back. Maybe he should just sit out the year. And especially if you got guys dropping like flies on both sides of the ball, it's almost like, would you want to see two of race back knowing what's going on with him? Just the same way in new England, we're all arguing with each other over like, you want to put freaking Drake may out there. He's going to get his head knocked off dude. this offensive line is complete garbage and Swiss cheese. What are we doing? That was perfect. And, but you still yeah. probably want to see him go out there, right? Like you've seen enough of Jacoby oh, Prissett yeah. throughout your life. So, I mean, oh. I know how dismal that offensive line might be and how the growing pains might be, but you want to see that feature out there. So, um, you know, it is ha so hard for a Dolphins fan because, as you know, we waited so many years since Marino. And, you know, you finally seem to have a glimpse of what a franchise or, you know, a starting – you know, a very good quarterback looks like, and then he has all these injuries. So you mentioned him coming back. It does sound like he's going to come back, you know, I maybe after the bye and, you know, then hopefully maybe the Dolphins are what three and three and they're still battling. But like you said, he comes back, he takes another one of those head injuries and then I cannot see him continuing his career. So the Dolphins have plenty of, question marks there and then um you know we want to fire chris greer that's the thing that's going on now i mean we've been talking about that for years everyone's questioning mike mcdaniel and again it's just so funny how we went from being this uh you know a little bit arrogant and confident because the dolphins what strung together two wild card appearances and uh you know within a matter of a month everything just kind of smacked us in the face you mentioned jared mayo and i don't want to throw this back to you well, I do want to throw this back to you, but yeah, how has it do. been? You know, we were not really uh i've uh, honestly focused mostly on the dolphins but how is the jared mayo uh you know tenure be, been these first four weeks of the season do you feel very good about where you're at because um i can admit it you had you know the best coach ever mm -hmm. yeah we're in the middle of this uh 
this emotional decline and acclimation to mediocrity, regression back to the pack. So, hey, this is what life was like for everyone else, period. That's been going on for several years, starting with the, the first COVID year in 2020 with Cam Newton. Then we have Mac Jones. Then we thought he was going to be the great hype and hope. Uh, it turns out he's a little bit of a head case and was much better in college when he had a controlled environment, dome weather, and, of course, one of your receivers as his boys to throw to. And so, and also, side note, uh, as anybody would probably know, throwing a former defensive coordinator in as your current offensive coordinator is never usually the best. Is never usually the best idea. Uh, so, as far as as uh, you could call him Jared Mayo, you can call him his name Gerard Mayo. You can call him like people on our radio station uh, obstinately do Gerard Mayo. It doesn't matter. I think the man knows what he's talking about and knows what he's doing. He obviously was an excellent player for several a Pro Bowl caliber player, Super Bowl champion. They used to joke and call him Gerard Belichick because he was such a, a such a coach in waiting early on in his career. The man knows the game. Like week one, when the Patriots played a game completely on script, on their terms, at their on their tempo and pace, and with Cincinnati not ready for prime time yet, they kicked their ass. Like it was 16-10, and the Patriots dominated that game, box to wire from opening kickoff to final whistle. And the players said, hey, he told us exactly how this game was going to play out. And we and, and we we played the script out. It was great. So he knows what he's doing. There are some that complain that things are a little too woke now, that things are a little like there's new murals. They're talking about a more collaborative environment, fewer hard ass vibes I, to me, you know, and I want to throw I'm going to sort of like pivot off this in a second. You know, there were a lot of New England fans that wanted an offensive mind coach of an offensive wunderkin, somebody whose fruit was plucked from the McVeigh or Shanahan tree like a McDaniel or maybe Cliff Kingsbury to call plays or to be the head coach. Zach Robinson, the play caller now down in Atlanta as well. Somebody who just may introduce a new dynamic. Instead, we have, you know, the hungry man dinner uh, of offensive coordinators in Alex Van Pelt. He's like, here's the meat. Here's the potatoes. Here's the vegetable. This is your running back. This is your quarterback. No one's in motion. We don't throw screens. We don't have any trickerations. We just, we run to set up the pass and that pass can't go longer than 12 yards. All right, break. And it's a freaking snooze fest, man. So Mayo knows what he's doing, but I also don't think that he's fully become his own man as a head coach yet. Cause I think between the GM and the coordinator and ownership, they have the clamps and the restraints on him uh, a little too much. So it's, I almost feel like his tenure will truly begin once the quarterback that he's going to be inextricably tied to for years, Drake may finally gets in there. And I mean, we talked about it, but you're, you got to be excited for what Drake May has shown, right? I mean, I, that I'm a fantasy guy. I'll be the first one to admit Super Flex League. I drafted Drake May. I know, in, uh, you know, mm -hmm. I drafted Drake May. I was very confident in that because I thought he was a very good quarterback. So, I mean, you're probably just waiting and licking your chops for him to finally get out there and uh, get action. I mean, because like you said, you had a little bit of a sprinkle of hope with Mac Jones, but, um, you know, that that turned out ugly real quick. Yeah, no, that went that went sideways real fast. Uh, I got since we're what since we're recording this for the six rings and football things, Patriots dolphins preview. We also have some people joining us on my socials as well as the W E E I socials, uh, who are making comments along the way. So we'll try to share the best and the worst of them along the way. Uh, always fun to have a, a live audience whenever you're chatting football, you know, I, I, I just, you know, AFC East had a terrible past week as well. Dolphins, uh, lose on Monday night football. The bills just got stampeded by Derrick Henry and the Ravens. Patriots get Good. run run. Yeah, exactly. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't hate a single frame of that broadcast. Uh, Pats didn't look good. The jets lose nine, seven to the freaking Broncos at home as well. That was my personal favorite. Um, maybe the AFC East is a little overrated. Maybe like, it's just not, maybe it's not what we thought it was going to be as well. And maybe this will just be like a one team gets a playoff berth. Do you have any hopes? Like I don't, I have cast off all hopes. And of course, I never ask anyone to feel bad for me, Josh. Oh, boo-hoo. Oh, you poor Patriots fans. Oh, you haven't made it to the playoffs in a couple of years? Go upstairs and cry into your six Super Bowl T-shirts and your 15 <laughs> different AFC Championship sweatshirts, you jackass. But, like, for the Dolphins, like you said, that crestfallen feeling of, like, hooray, we are actually fun to watch again. Oh, we lost in January. Uh, but there's always this, oh, no, this is terrible. Um, do you feel like there will be some pressure on Mike McDaniel because – We've opened up a dialogue recently about how, like, there may be a head coach problem in the NFL. A lot of guys that are coordinators and they can call some 
like aggressive defenses and some snappy offenses, but like when ish hits the fan and you got to control the whole team, um, it's, it's kind of tough for him. You know, while you've got guys like Mike Vrabel that give off the hard ass vibes sitting out there waiting to pounce on their next opportunity. Yeah, I mean, I, I can absolutely see it happening. I mentioned Chris Greer and Dolphin fans, you know, wanting the axe to come down on him. I mean, the worst thing the Dolphins have done is continue to keep, you know, head coach, GM, and, you know, push, kicking the can down the road. So if, 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 you know, we continue down this trajectory, I absolutely think you then have to question Mike McDaniel. Sure, he has an out with saying, you know, we had this injury to Tua, you know, the offensive line's banged up. But at the end of the day, you think that he is this, like you mentioned, a wonder kid, a guy that is an offensive mastermind that, you know, set the world on fire, right? But when it comes down to it in January, you know, late in the season, uh, we just turn into a pumpkin. It's like Cinderella. I'm a girl dad, you know, the Cinderella at midnight, that pump, that nice carriage just turns into a pumpkin. And that's what we've seen with Mike McDaniel's offense. So um, I do think at the end of this year, we will have some questions to ask. I just hope that somehow they turn it around, but I, I really don't have any hope that they're going to do that. So you think there's at least a little bit of, that whole a glimmer of hope of like, hey, maybe they can win on Sunday. Maybe they'll pull off like it, you're not expecting. I wonder if humor me for a second. Do you think there's any chance Sunday, you know, Patriots are one and a half point favorite over under 36 and a half, you know, so the world is going to be in on some team on the money line and the under that's where all the money's going to go. Do you think there's any chance that for some reason the dam breaks because neither team can generate a pass rush? They can only cover for so long. And all of a sudden it's like, it's the middle of the second quarter. And we're like, how the hell did this get to be, you know, Dolphins 20 Patriots 17. Yeah. I mean, it could absolutely happen. Right. I mean, we saw last week, the Dolphins getting gashed in the run game, which I, I wanted to ask you that, but I'll wait on that. But yeah, I could definitely see these two teams kind of battling it back and forth. And, you know, maybe this, breaking into some kind of offensive battle. I mean, the thing to me with Snoop Huntley is he brings that element of, you know, he being able to extend plays and, you know, break off those runs. We saw last week, carried the ball eight times for 40 yards, did score a touchdown. So you have to worry about him throwing the ball, but more damning is his ability to run. So, um, yeah, I could see this thing maybe breaking out, but at the same time, we could sit here and say, see it being what three to six and one of the worst games we ever watched. Uh, I mean, I don't know how, I don't know how many more times, like, the, the stadium was full for the home opener, the second game of the season when they, they were up all game long against the Seahawks, but then faltered late and lost in overtime, had a field goal late blocked as well. I think that may be the only time you'll see Gillette stadium full this year. Like people, you can't sell tickets or you might be people giving away, or if you're going to sell them, you're going to sell them for less than face value. If you check the secondhand market now, tickets are going for 30, 40% less than face already on the secondhand market. And it's October freaking third as we record this. Like that's that's just sad. That's just like it's just a sorry state of affairs between the two teams. And sadly, it's so funny how like Gerard Mayo, week one, the hero of Pat's Nation in all New England. Look how tough ass this football team is. They're gonna start, you know, street brawls with set, you know, 16 other opponents this season, and they're gonna make us proud. It might be the most fun six and eleven team to ever watch. Hey, the Dolphins may not be a Super Bowl contender and can't hang maybe with Kansas City or even the Houston Texans, but man, is it fun to watch Mike McDaniel's offense? Now, like a couple of weeks later, it's like, is this too big for Gerard Mayo? Is it time for Mike McDaniel to go? Like, how quickly in fickle things turn, turn like in the modern NFL? Yeah, I mean, and it, it's the same way with prospects, right? We've heard it like time and time again, you hear a prospect at crown and then, you know, they fall back down. And it's crazy with the Dolphins. I mean, they have not had a lead all season. They're, uh, they, not, they hit a last second field goal in week one to uh, win the game. So we have had no lead. It has been absolutely dismal. And like oh, you said, that's I mean, right. You have, guys should almost be like defeated. Yeah, we should on be on four. Yeah. It's Javon Honda knock, knock the ball out there uh, right at the goal line. So, oh, um, so yeah, so. we were literally a fumble away from being 0 and 4. And I mean, again, we've, you guys have had it so – I mean, I'm glad you kind of threw shade at yourself because you, as Patriots fans, you have been a little bit spoiled. I mean, you guys probably lost more like AFC championship games than I probably saw playoff <laughs> wins in my lifetime. But, um, you know, to come into this and think, you know, maybe this year could be different and then within four weeks just have it all, you know, turn to crap, it, it definitely hurts. But, you know, that's what makes us fans, right? Eventually, hopefully, the Dolphins will get, uh, find a way back to the top of the AFCs. But I've been saying that for 25 years now and we're still waiting. <laughs> Yeah, dude, and you just got like, and, and that's what makes it so cruel to just have the rug pulled out from under you. Like Lucy jer jerks the football away one more time, pain in the ass that she is. Uh, but that's modern NFL too. Like, who the hell, who who's freaking 2024 NFL bingo card had the Vikings four and zero 
looking looking like they could go 5 and 0 in London this week like an offensive juggernaut with Sam Darnold who was available for any team to be a backup and you know becomes the starter in our former backup quarterbacks offense in Minnesota it also helps when you have an offensive line that's healthy um your old your old uh, our old guy our old coordinator your old head coach Brian Flores calling a nasty defense you know and two of the 20 best wide receivers in football as well all right, Josh, uh, you've been more than generous with your time. I appreciate it very much. Let's get a score prediction uh, for how this one plays out from you before we kick it on to the next segment here on Six Rings. All right, I'm just going to I'm gonna throw out 17-14. How's that sound? 17-14 Dolphins. Um, again, I'm not very confident in this one. I laughed <laughs> last week. You know, we're going to lose to Will Levis, and then it's going to be all downhill. So I joke this is going to be a Jacoby Brissett revenge game. I hope I'm wrong, but 17-14 Dolphins. That's right. Jacoby Brissett had a little – had a – had a little stint with the Dolphins as well. I forget. God, he's played everywhere. Everywhere. What a whore. Yeah. He's really just played for everyone. <laughs> he's played for everyone at this point, man. <laughs> that is wild. All right. So I went on the record 16 13 Patriots. You said 17 14 Dolphins. It's probably going to finish somewhere there in the middle. And only the true diehards like us who have to pot about it, write about it, broadcast about it, or just plain care too much about it. One of our viewers right now on YouTube Live. Joey Zaguire, Pat Zero, Finn Zero. If it finishes, okay, Joey, I'm gonna tell you right now, I will, I will mail to Josh, our friend Josh Houts, once again, kind enough to join us from another Dolphins podcast, the Miami Dolphins podcast in the Odyssey Podcast Network. If it finishes zero zero, which I think would be scoregami, I think that has never happened in the NFL or at least the modern NFL. I'll mail you, Joey, and I will mail Josh. Each of you a six pack of Narragansett beers. All right. I'm hoping, I guess I should hope for it now, right? I, I do not want to hope for us having to sit through a 0-0 we, zero Jacoby we, Brissett we, Snoop no, we, battle. Uh, no one wants, oh my God. I mean, remember last year when the Patriots, I don't know if you remember this, when the Patriots played the Steelers on Thursday Night Football and Amazon had no idea because the Patriots were so star and identity free. And so the, the graphic uh, advertising the Thursday Night game was a picture of TJ Watt and then a picture of Bill Belichick. Like the Pats were so bad. It's like the coach against someone who actually plays for the other team. That, they should have just had Bill Belichick's dog instead. That would have been, that would have been the ultimate oh, low there. God. <laughs> I'd much rather watch Nike the dog coach and play at this point. Yeah, I mean, yeah, the, the, right here. Uh, Jorge Lundeo, this team is hard to watch. No superstars to speak of. There's no juice. Um, yeah, and the Pats keep gift, being gifted all these points. Like, Oh man, it is rough. I mean, I, for us, if this is the bill that came due for all those years of greatness, we will happily and continue to pay it because it is what it is. But all you just want to see your team get back on track and give you a glimmer of hope for the season. I just want something to look forward to, to build on for the Drake may years to come, but we'll see. All right, uh, Josh, thanks very much for joining us here for a little behind enemy lines. Six Rings and Football Things slash another Dolphins podcast crossover as we go behind enemy lines. You can follow him at Houts, H-O-U-T-Z. And of course, he is the co-host and producer of another Dolphins podcast in the Odyssey Podcast Network. Thanks very much, man. Appreciate your time, bro. Thanks for having me. Enjoy the game this weekend. Yep, I'll get I'll get that uh, address from you um, when it finishes, <laughs> when the whistle goes off. 70 minutes yeah. of 0-0 zero, zero football, man. Can't wait, man. Have a good night.